Hey, what's up, everyone? It's me, Matt Diazable, coming at you with another album review, and we're doing more Japanese bands, and this one is a bit of a doozy. One of the legendary hardcore bands out from Osaka, Japan. We have the band Sand with their album Death to Sheeple. Now, this band has been around since about 2003, I think. They've done some splits with bands like Numb and uh, other like huge uh, hardcore bands in the Japanese scene. They put out, I think, one, it's not two albums here or there. I think they've been kind of infrequent. Yeah, they haven't been a, a frequently playing band. They're always doing other stuff. Uh, let's check out this uh, dope ass band called Sand. The song starts off with some long and uh, distorted guitar playing. And then you get some help with the drums and cymbals coming in. And then they just like cock it and load it and then boom drop it on you with this heavy ass breakdown in the opening um the vocals i'm getting like really uh drunk uncle vibes like drunk yelling uncle vibes like he sounds just totally like been drinking too many beers and he's just like let me get on the mic um so overall it's a really solid and groovy uh and uh song with the riffs it reminds me of like 2014's metalcore Especially that, uh, I think I'm saying this right, Joey Strugs uh, uh, production style. Like he did like the Devil Rose Prada and stuff like that. That kind of uh, production style. Overall, it's a pretty simple and not a flashy song. It's just dumb, heavy, and fun. And I think that's what they're shooting for. And I think the only thing that's lacking here is probably the vocals. They seem a bit lazy and uh, just don't sound really excited to be there. But nonetheless, let's check this song out. Them drunk uncle vibes, baby. Uh, vocals are definitely more impressive on this track. And the guitars are nice and crunchy and everything. Drums have some like weight to them. They have like a, a good punch to them. But weirdly, the song kind of, I don't know, it kind of comes and goes without even realizing it. Maybe it's because it's too short, but it doesn't seem very impressive. Or at least it doesn't leave a lasting impression. Uh, the vocals sound really different here, but surprisingly they work with how the overall song sounds. Drums are a bit repetitive here, but they're in the pocket they're just they're hitting the notes and just going along nicely but they just sound a bit it's too similar and just redundant uh after the one minute par uh, part of the song uh they hit like some different vocal patterns that seem to work better they switch it up a little bit so that's nice uh and then out of nowhere in the middle of the song there's just a beefy ass breakdown it's a wild and silly track that i think it's really fun and has a lot of playful elements to it this is an interlude song here that has like some soft lounge music styles to it. Uh, it reminds me of a, like a Japanese RPG game and it's like like mixed with like GTA 3 that not lo-fi but that jazzy chill like lounge music. Very nice whimsical uh, drums and xylophones played throughout this uh, interlude. Uh, also there's like some creepy guy who like laughs occasionally that kind of like takes you out of the experience a bit. And then as the song progressed, I looked at it, it's like a three, four minute long interlude. And I noticed it goes on for way too long and it just drags and drags. Um, I don't know if it was on purpose or they're just trying to add some more time to the album, but it just, it feels bad. It just drags out too long. And I started to know this when I listen to Japanese music, they make all their songs like four minutes plus, whether it's rap, hardcore, j-pop or something they're always really long songs i don't know if that's a japanese thing or not but I, I feel like i've noticed that a lot with japanese music just overly long so with that interlude and everything going for so long so uh this track like came in it was so like jarring and like oh shit 
I'm listening to a hardcore album. Right, right. There's going to be some heavy chugs, guitars, and riffs. And so it was like, it threw me off. Uh, the vocals sound really nasty here. And they got some good double bass going on that really makes things heavy. Uh, his vocal fry sounds superior, like superb. Like sound great here. And there's a really nice uh, two-step. This might be probably the best track up until this point. Groovy ass breakdown and intro of the song. Like shouldn't be that heavy so early with this track, but they do it well. Uh, reminds me of peak 2014, like metalcore heaviness of like similar bands like For the Fallen Dreams and First Blood. I get like a lot of those vibes on this track. Um, it's a stupid, dumb, heavy track with some really slowed down guitars and heavy percussions and extremely deep bass. Uh, they got some pretty interesting lyrics like saying pure hatred, positive hatred. So like they're they're going in on it. They're being heavy and angry for a reason. Um, this might be in terms on this album the best track on this album I feel because it's just overall written really well and plays heavy and hard. So here's a clip of Paint It Black. Um, another interlude, but this one's more of an acoustic track and the guitars seem a bit off when playing on this interlude and this overall interlude, this particular one really kills the vibe and flow of this album, I think. So I think it's a really bad placement, if not kind of pointless in a way. Got some nice and groovy vibes here. The drums sound really good. I just wish you could hear the, hear the cymbals more. They're kind of like drowned out on this track. Uh, the guitar scaling sounds really good and like the playing here with the riffs and whatnot very nice uh, but i will say the vocals seem a bit uh strained like he's trying too hard to sound too uh like hard and stuff so vocals eh, not the best another interlude yep but this one's more of a hip-hop style and uh has some like dj scratching in the background um still the interludes they really throw off the groove of the album i think but i'll give them this that each interlude has been different so you're getting some variety there because this one has some like cool like jazz style guitars in the background and the, the drums are just simple and laying it down if it was like on a hip-hop track or just it was just this uh only interlude it might have been good but they got too much going on and they uh are still too long of interludes so here's a little clip of hazy Like it's not bad but it just really throws off the whole album and there's like why is it here got some like southern style uh heaviness on this track so switching it up a little bit which is cool the riffs go hard on this track and the drums though are still hard to hear bass also isn't really being felt as much as well it's just kind of like man kind of there uh but overall the riffs off from the guitars are really carrying this song it's funny how this song is called the intro but it's at the end of the album so I don't know what's going on there. Um, has some like grunge sounding guitars. And when it goes in and goes hard, it goes hard. Like they 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 love to go heavy when they can. Uh, I love the echoey sound of the guitars here. Sounds really good. But once again, the cymbals can't really hear them. Yeah, and those are my thoughts on this Sand album. And the one thing I could say about this uh, album is pacing. The pacing on this album is really bad because they have four interludes on an 11 track album and each interlude is almost two to three minutes long and that's like about 25 percent of the album so it's like what are y'all doing here there's 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 just so much extra stuff they don't need here that kind of bogs this album down now if they had it like one interlude fine or I don't know what they're trying to do and have fun with these interludes. Great, have fun with it. But I don't know. It just slows down the pacing and the flow of the album. But they sound heavy. The cr guitars are crunchy. The vocals, they sound like a drunk uncle from like hell and stuff with how different the uh, vocal patterns are. Um, the drums and 
bass they are kind of lost in the mix and stuff but when they can be heard they're fucking powerful so like they they're not here to try to be something new and impressive they're just here to be dumb heavy and they do that well and when you see them live it's great it's heavy um it's just as an album listening to this as an experience those interludes just uh, really slow things down and drag it down a bit so uh i can say that this uh, album from sand death to sheeple is a light to like possibly a little bit lower than that, but i round it up a bit to a light seven out of ten yeah so if you want something really dumb really heavy and just ignorant as fuck check out sand they play really good stuff if you were to have some heavy stuff good gym stuff and just want to get rowdy links down below check out this video i got going on and thanks for coming on by i'm matt from diazable I appreciate y'all and thank you. Bye.